Okay, so um, it's my pleasure to introduce Lisa Hurt today. Um, she will be presenting Are You Copying Me? Leveraging Expert Visual Scan Path to Transmit Visual Literacy in Novice Histology Students. And this um, abstract was accepted for Poster Presentation Award Finalist at AAA Experimental Biology. Hi, oh, hi, my name is Lisa again, and if anybody has any questions, please feel free to email me here. I'd like to thank Dr. Lisa Lee and everyone else ha that has made this project possible. I'd also like to talk about what is histology and what does that have to do with eye tracking? Histology is the study of tissues and requires pattern recognition to become an expert. Something that experts pick up on is an area of interest or AOI that helps them develop this pattern recognition. But nationwide, there has been a decrease in course hours dedicated to histology with an increase in virtual microscopy use, or VM. And this basically just simulates a microscope online. But we don't know if VM is an effective or an accurate way to teach students or how students learn through this online format. So what we can do is pair an eye tracking device with VM to see how students develop this pattern recognition. In our lab, a previous study showed that when students viewed an expert identify a blood smear, this accelerated the student's learning. We want to know if this effect can be applied to complex tissues, such as gastrointestinal system or the lymphatic system. In our study, we have two hypotheses. Our first one is that a high score on the mental rotation test, or MRT, will positively correlate with student performance. And mental rotation is just how well can you rotate or manipulate an object in your mind. And we're doing this because if you have a higher MRT, you're better at anatomy, and also men on average have a higher MRT than women. And we have to find student performance as accuracy, so how many questions do they get correct, and also how efficient are they at identifying a slide. We also believe that when we show um, a student's uh, expert histologist completing a complex tissue, that this will increase their performance and they will view more areas of interest because of it. To do this, we had 25 students in histology and we gave them each a mental rotation test. And then depending on their score, we evenly distributed them into groups A and group B. Both group A and group B came back for two sessions that were a week apart, gastrointestinal and lymphatic. And they had not learned about these organ systems yet in class, so that they were learning about it for the first time during the experiment. So to orient them, we would have exposed them to three organs from the gastrointestinal system, and then we would have implemented the experiment. And here you can see group A was experimental, denoted by the yellow beaker. And so group A would have seen a video of the expert histologist's eye movements shown here. So the dots represent fixations, which just means where is the expert looking? And then the size of the dots mean fixation duration. So how long are they staring at that place? And a bigger circle means that they're staring at that place for longer. And the lines mean saccade length. So how long are their eye movements in between places that they're looking? And because experts are very efficient on the way that they identify slides, they have longer eye movements, they don't look at as many places, and they don't stare as long as at many places. And the group B or control group would have not seen the expert's eye movements. Then both groups would have been tested on the same 21 slides as seen here, and then asked to identify what did they just see. And this is where we got our accuracy data. And to collect the areas of interest data, here I have made a box around an area of interest, and the students could not see this box as they were participating in the study. But here is an example of a student participating in the study and looking at areas of interest. And a week later, the, all the students would have come back for the lymphatic session and done the same thing, but this time group B was experimental. Overall, we had five, over 5,000 pieces of data. And even though we had a small end, this is a really good number to start to work with because we get so much data per participant. Using all this data, we did t-tests and also a linear regression. For to test our first hypothesis, we found that there was no correlation between mental rotation and accuracy, which is a first finding of its kind. 
we also decided to compare the groups against each other. And we did not find any significance comparing the groups across the two sessions. But as you can see here, the groups were getting better over time because for example, group A, you can see the decrease. So we decided to explore this further. We decided to compare the groups against themselves. And you can see that the groups became more accurate during session two. They took less time to answer. They didn't stare as long. And they also had longer eye movements, which means that they're mimicking what they see that the expert is doing. And they're all developing a more efficient way to identify the slide. And because group B did have a true control to start with, and then they saw the expert and that they got better, we believe that this is a really worthwhile tool because we are seeing acceleration in learning. But interestingly enough, group A, because they were exposed to the expert first, was more significant on more measures, meaning that they could have had a carryover effect that helped them accelerate their learning through the entire uh, study. But regardless, both groups did better over time, so, and that's the effect we wanted to see. We were also interested in how many areas of interest did the groups look at. And although this is not significant, we did find a trend that when the groups um, were in the experimental condition, they did view more areas of interest than not. We were also wanting to know why didn't we see a significant difference comparing the groups when we did see that both groups did get better over time? And this could be because during session one, women looked at more places on the screen, they stared at more places on the screen, and also they took longer to answer. But this was not seen in session two, which means that we could have a compounding variable being introduced into our data. Overall, we did not find a significance between groups, but this could have been because of many reasons. We could have compounding variables, there could have been a carryover effect, and we did have a small sample size and only six men. But interesting things that we did see is that both groups did develop a more efficient scan path or a way to identify the slide over time, and that group A was most efficient. Thank you for your time. Is there any questions? Great. Thank you so much for that presentation, Lisa. We have one question um, in the chat box, um, and that is, do you think that the increased performance came with the increased exposure to histology throughout the semester um, and better pattern recognition? So I do not because there's only one week in between both time frames, and so there could have been a little bit of learning, a little bit more pattern recognition, but I don't believe that could account for the big differences that we were seeing. Okay, so you think that the gap between the tests were negligible um, in the scheme of the experiment? Yes. Okay, great. If there are any additional questions for Lisa, we do have a couple minutes or a minute and a half. So if you would like to, ask her, please submit them via Zoom uh, chat box. And um, while we're waiting, I do have one question for you. Do you think that female students, why do you think that the female students actually took longer um, to look around and answer, that, at least at the first time? So there is a lot of data and research to support that when females feel intimidated by an authority figure, for example, on a math test, that they score lower on that math test than when they would have not been with an authority figure. And so because I was in the room as the participants were taking this experiment and I was their histology TA, I could have been seen as an authority figure and affected um, their ability to participate fully. Another last question is, what is a practical way I can teach students where to look on slides? How can I translate this study to my teaching? That's a great question. So what we are, we're basically doing is just stepping the students into how do you identify a slide? So they, you look at different um, unique features as areas of interest. For example, the ilium has Pyers patches, which are very unique. So you would say, 
we look here and we see this, you look at the epithelium, and then it's just a stepwise process to help them gain that pattern recognition. With that, thank you so much, Lisa. We'll move on to the next presenter.